open on version 4.209 on Docker Swarm. Version 4.209 is part of the community edition, and this video is the first in a series which describes how to implement common use cases for identity governance, as well as SSO and MFA. Before we get into the actual deployment, let's spend a couple of minutes reviewing the OpenM architecture and deployment options. First, you can deploy OpenM in several ways. The community version supports Docker Swarm and RPM-based deployments, whereas the enterprise version supports Swarm, RPM, Kubernetes, OpenShift, and native cloud deployments on Azure, AWS, and Google using these technologies. Containers provide customers with several benefits. Since containers allow us to package the application and related dependencies together, it can be significantly easier to deploy. You will see this later in the video where we take a moderately complex stack consisting of 13 or 14 containers and we deploy it in less than an hour. In the same way, it's easier to apply updates to containers as well. Another benefit of using containers is the added level of security. From a deployment perspective, containers provide for isolation from the host operating system. Containers also secure inter-container communication, which is defined by the orchestration platform. All of these benefits work together to provide a lower total cost of ownership. This next slide provides an overview of Docker Swarm and Kubernetes. The goal is to help you determine which approach is appropriate for what you're trying to accomplish. Swarm is easy to get started with, and it works well for smaller deployments. However, for large deployments where you need high availability and scalability, we recommend using Kubernetes or an RPM-based deployments. There's a steep learning curve that goes with Kubernetes, but it provides extensive configuration options to meet enterprise needs. The enterprise version of OpenIAM provides Terraform scripts to simplify deployments at Kubernetes and will shield you from some of the complexity. This next slide provides an overview of the various containers that make up the OpenIAM stack. The boxes in gray represent infrastructure components which are used across the application. The boxes in blue represent containers which provide domain-specific functionality. From a deployment perspective, both the UI layer and the service layer can be deployed on a single Linux host, or they can be scaled out to a multi-node cluster. Now that we've covered some of the background information, let's shift focus to the deployment. We can split this up into two parts. The first part will focus on preparing the VM for installation. The second part will focus on the installation of the OpenM application itself. These slides that which are being shown provide a summary of the updates that we'll be providing during the installation process. Let's start the installation process. The first thing that we need to do is to ensure that the minimum system requirements are available. First, we need to check that it has eight vCPUs and then we can validate that it has 32 gigs of RAM. Both of these are important and if you try to use a lower configuration, the installation will fail. We also need to ensure that some of the utilities such as Git and Nano have been installed on the VM. We can do this using the normal apt get install command. One of the components that we use in OpenIM is Elasticsearch. For Elasticsearch to operate effectively, we need to update the max map counts value. Similarly, for Docker, we need to disable IPv6 to prevent potential network issues. We can make these changes by updating the syscuttle file. After the file has been updated, we can run syscuttle-p to apply these changes. Next, we will need to install a few packages such as curl and CA certificates, which will be used during the installation process. We can do this by using the apt-get install command like we did earlier. Once these packages have been installed, we need to install the Docker engine. Docker is usually not available through the standard repositories, so we need to use the add apt repository command to add a repository from which Docker can be, can be downloaded. On some distributions, you'll see the repository is not signed error as we're seeing on the screen. To fix this problem, we can simply edit the sources.list file as we're showing here. Essentially, you're going to replace the word focal with eon. After saving the changes, run the following curl command and this should resolve the problem. 
Once the repository has been successfully defined, we can go ahead and install Docker. Once Docker has been installed, we need to enable the service and then start it. You won't be able to use Docker without this step. We can validate that Docker has been installed correctly by running Docker Hello World. You should see output similar to what we're showing here. The last step in setting up Docker is to install Docker Compose. Whereas Docker provides the ability to run and manage a single container application, Docker Compose allows you to define and manage a multi-container application such as OpenIM. You can use the curl command shown here to install Docker Compose and then set permissions on the Docker Compose folder. The version of Docker Compose is important and is defined in the curl command. You should not use an older version of Docker Compose with OpenIM. Everything we've done so far has been focused on preparing the VM and install the components necessary to run OpenIM. The rest of the process will be focused on installing the OpenIM application. The first thing that we need to do is to clone the OpenIM Docker Compose project from the OpenIM Git repository. This project contains a number of items such as scripts to start and stop the application, environment settings, and the YAML files which will be used by the containers. Once the project has been cloned, we need to ensure that we're using the correct version. At the time of this video's creation, version 4209 is the latest community release. We can use the git checkout command to move to version 4209. If we look at the structure of the Docker Compose project, we can see a number of utility scripts as well as folders where the YAML files are being kept. From the collection of utility scripts, setup.sh is used to bring down the Docker containers from Docker repository. Startup.sh is used to start the application. Shutdown.sh is used to stop the OpenAM application and teardown is used to perform a cleanup. OpenIM uses a vault to store sensitive information such as encryption keys. To set up the vault, we need to generate certificates and a Java key store file. To do this, we first need to set the vault JKS password variable in the environment.sh file. You can set this value to be anything that you want it to be. As you're scrolling through this file, you'll notice that this is a central place where we can manage all environment variables. Save the changes when you're done, and then run the generate certificate sh file, which will in turn generate the certificates which are needed. During the setup process, we also need to tell the installer what type of database we'll be using. We can do this by updating the environment.sh file that we updated in the last step. We need to update this file in two places. First, we need to look for the db type variable. This defines the type of database that we'll be using. By default, this should be MariaDB. If you're using a different database, such as Postgres, Oracle, or SQL Server, then you can change this value accordingly. But if you do this, then you also need to update the Hibernate di dialect as well. The next set of edits should be in the section with the Flyway entries. Flyway is a versioning and migration utility for your database. During the installation process, Flyway will create and initialize your schema. In the future, if you want to upgrade, it will help you upgrade from one version to another as well. There are two databases or schemas in OpenIM. One is called OpenIM, and this is our primary schema. The other is called Activity, and this is where all the workflow-related details are being maintained. For both the Activity and the OpenIM schema, Enter the port which the database will be running on. Since we're using MariaDB, the port will be 3306. For the host value, enter the word database, which implies that the database will be running in the, inside the Docker Swarm. If you're using an external database, then provide the host name where the database is running.
Before we pull the containers from hop.docker.com, we need to initialize Docker Swarm using the Docker Swarm init command. Once Swarm has been initialized, we can run setup.sh from our Docker Compose project. This process will take several minutes as it's pulling all the required containers from the OpenAM Docker repository. Once the setup process is completed, we're finally ready to start the application. Run the startup.sh script to kick off this process. Depending on your environment, this process can take 10 to 15 minutes to complete. Since the startup process can take some time, we can use the watch command to monitor the containers as they're coming up. The UI container will be the last to start as it needs both the infrastructure and the service layer to be up before it can start. After the containers are all reporting a healthy status, we can validate that our application is up and running by running the following curl command. If you get an HTTP 200, which indicates success, then it means that the containers are indeed up and we can try to log into the application for the first time. The first time you log in, use the IP address of the Linux host where OpenAM has been installed. You'll be redirected to the login page. Enter the default credentials for a new deployment. The system will prompt you to change your password and it will be validated against the default out-of-the-box password policy. You'll be able to go ahead and change the policy later on. After you change your password, you'll be asked to complete the security questions. Make note of your answers as they may come in handy if you accidentally lock your account. If you don't want to use challenge questions in your deployment, you can set this up later when you update your password policy. This last step in the installation process is to define a content provider. You can think of a content provider as an alias to a domain. You can have more than one content provider and this will be discussed in a lot more detail in a separate video. For now, you can enter any value that you want. We're going to use the word default, implying default content provider. The domain pattern will be defaulted in for you, and you should not change this value. For SSL, select no. We'll be setting up SSL and other basic configuration in a separate video as well. Once the content provider has been saved, you're ready to use the application. If you have any questions, drop us a note through our website at www.openam.com. Thank you for watching this video.